Strategic Living with Brian Holmes, episode number 23. Welcome, everyone, to the program today. Hey, it's 2014, everybody. It's a brand new year. Wonderful new opportunities are ahead of us. What a great time to be alive, hey? Well, it's great to have you with us on the program where we are all about transforming minds, developing leaders, changing nations. We want to see you healed, your mind renewed. We want to see your life just totally transformed. Really, we want to see you become all that God has created you to be. Man, it's going to be an awesome episode. It's our very first one of 2014, so I'd like you to just make yourself comfortable and get ready to open your heart, and let's share together, everybody, the joy of new beginnings. Well, it's so awesome to be back with you after having a week off. Trust that you had a wonderful Christmas 2013. I hope that you had a great time with your family, with your friends, being around the people that you love and care about. I certainly trust that uh, if you listen to our Christmas program that you took time to really express your gratitude and thankfulness for the blessings of God, for friendships, for relationships, for uh, so many of the benefits that we get to experience on a day-to-day basis that so often we don't think about. But Man, I just hope you had a wonderful Christmas holiday. Trust that your entrance into 2014 was exciting and fresh and and uh, just that you're looking forward to a wonderful new year as I am. Well, over the next several weeks, I'm going to be sharing with you some concepts about what I am calling new beginnings. We're going to be talking about putting the past behind you, getting in touch with the dreams of the desires that are in your heart. I want to share with you some ideas about how you can confidently pursue the passions and the interest that you have. We're going to talk about setting goals, and a lot of people are talking about goals right now. But I don't want you to just set goals for the sake of setting goals. We want to talk about setting goals that matter, setting goals that are really meaningful and that will, in fact, produce results for you in this new year going to be sharing from you in this episode some things from my heart, a little bit of reflection about 2013, uh, some of the things that I believe God's been doing in my life, and in talking to so many of my friends and associates around the country and even around the world, that I'm hearing from them that God is doing similar things in their hearts. And I think as we talk about new beginnings today, you're going to hear something that resonates in your heart something that speaks to you because I really believe there's a longing in each of us right now for a a clean sheet of paper, embarking on a new, a fresh journey, and we're going to call it basically choosing to embrace a new season. Well, let's start today talking about new beginnings, of course, about new things, about fresh starts. Let's introduce a spiritual principle here that I believe will be very appropriate. Familiar passage of scripture in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12 to 16, it says, not that I have already obtained it, whatever it is, or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that thing for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet or having arrived yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I'm going to say that part again. There's one thing that I do, Paul said. I forget everything that's behind me, and I'm reaching forward to what is now in front of me. He says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as are perfect, and that word perfect there doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you are mature. You you have an attitude that is 
mature in its looking into the future. It says, Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. And let us keep living by this same standard to which we have attained. Another quick verse that I'd like to throw in here just for good measure. One of my favorite passages in the entire canon of Scripture. Isaiah 43, verse 18, 19. I want you to get this one. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it shall spring forth. Don't call to mind the former things. Don't consider the things of the past. I'm doing something brand new. It's coming forth right now. And then he asked this tantalizing question. Will you not be aware of it? Amazing. Well, I hope that gets us off to the right kind of start this year. I believe with everything in my being that there are new things that are emerging right now. And I'm not just talking about inventions or ideas, and those certainly are coming forward as well. But I'm talking about as it relates to destiny, as it relates to our calling, as it relates to even the season that we're living in right now. I believe that there are things that we've never embraced before, never experienced before, never partaken of before, that that right now is becoming available to us. It's new things. And I am so excited. Let me just be real slangish here. I am pumped. I am overwhelmed with joy knowing that 2014 is going to be literally the very best year that I've ever experienced in my life. And I have a deep belief that it can also be the best year you have ever experienced in your life. It's all about forward. It's all about the future. It is all about putting the past behind you and looking into what is possible, what is ahead of you. So let me just share with you a few things that that have come to my mind over the last number of days. This is the time of the year where so many of us reflect on the previous year. We look at our accomplishments, look at our challenges, maybe look at some of the painful things we've experienced, maybe some of the blows that we've taken in the previous year. And all those things are important that we look at those and assess those and truly find the meaning, find the value in those experiences. Because I believe that nothing happens by accident, and all things that that do happen to us, either God has, has led us to that place, or God has allowed those things to happen, and contained within the context of those events, those circumstances, those experiences, those moments, there is value. There is something that is of value there that we can glean from it, learn from it, grow from it. And so I do believe that a part of the process of entering into a new season is to take time to honestly reflect on what has happened in recent days and weeks and months and even over the last year. And so I've been kind of doing some of that. It's really uh, my time of the year to do that. Normally this time of the year I go away for several days and really just kind of clear my mind and look at my life as a whole and and really pray and ask the the Lord to help me to see things the way he sees things not only regarding what I've been through but where I am going. And so today's program is going to be a little different and I am going to share with you from my heart some very personal experiences. But then I'm going to shift into pointing us toward what I am calling this this year a new beginning, a new beginning and I'm so excited about it. You know, everything that happens in life happens in seasons. We know that in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, the writers there talk about to everything there is a time and there is a season. A very dear friend of mine for many years has taught this principle that life is lived on levels and experienced in stages. And then when you go beyond that, you must know that what is excellent on the previous level 
once you've graduated to the new level, what was excellent in the previous season is mediocre at best now. We've talked about that on this program. As I look back over my entire life, and by the way, I'm approaching this month the the ripe old age of 47 years old. As I look back over my life, it is so plain to me that God has led me on a very strategic and a very purposeful journey. And as I really assess and look at it, I can see how seasons come and seasons go, how in in the seasons of my childhood, so much of what I know and what I believe was framed. And in my case, because of some traumatic things that took place early in my life, uh, there, there were things that took place that were not good things. However, God in his powerful, amazing wisdom has now used those things to catapult me and my wife and my family into our purpose, into our destiny, helping other people to to deal with certain issues. And so we look at childhood and back in my childhood for example at 15 years old I've told this story here before but I you know at 15 years old I felt like there was more for me out there than what I was experiencing and with my parents blessing I literally kind of uprooted myself from the church setting I'd grown up in and the circle of friends that I had and I moved to another place and and began another journey another part of my journey and in that New relationships came out of that, and because of those that season, later in life, other relationships developed out of that. And it's just it's just been one thing after the other, step by step. And I'm not calling myself a good man, but I believe my heart is pure toward the Lord and toward His purposes. And the Bible does promise us that a, the steps of a good person are ordered of the Lord. And there are times, ladies and gentlemen, when you may not have a clue what in the world is going on. It may seem as though the last thing that's happening is that God's leading you. But in fact, I really believe that if we trust that we are his treasure, his possession, that he cares for us in a way where even when we can't see that he is leading us and the steps that we are presently involved with, even though it may not feel great to us, that they there is great purpose and great value there. Seasons come and seasons go. I've always had a real sense, a a real knowing, I suppose, that God's hand was truly leading me. Now, let's fast forward a ways, and let me say to you that over the last three or four years, this journey has intensified a bit because I have felt as though that I was coming into a completely new realm, a new season, a new Uh, just a whole new kind of a place. And it just so happens that as I'm sharing this with you today on this podcast, that I I feel as though entering into 2014 was the crossing for me into this new dimension. I, I just, I don't know how to explain that to you. It's not just in my head. It's really in my heart. I, I just feel as though there is a significance for me, for my family, for our future that crossing from 2013 into 2014 was a monumental, pivotal moment in my life. And, you know, during this process, the last several years, I I have to tell you, there's been some pain. There's been some consternation. There's been some confusion at times. Uh, There's certainly been a lot of moments where I I simply did not understand what was happening, quote-unquote, to me. And I, I suppose that many would say, well, you know, your, your 40s, your mid to late 40s, you know, you're going through midlife crisis. And the truth is, I don't like that term. I, I don't like that phrase because it, it indicates that there's truly a crisis. I don't feel like that I'm in crisis at all. In fact, I don't, I don't see my life as being in crisis. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like that some of the lessons and the processes that we have had to go through in the last number of years have been difficult and at times painful. But the truth is, in my heart of hearts, I've always known that this was almost like a rite of passage. It was almost as though, uh, okay, you, you have to go through this place in order that I might work in you and work off of you and work out of you the things that would keep you from being qualified for the next season. It's an exciting time to me. I'm telling you, it's not easy. Straight up, not easy. 
You say, well, Brian, what are you going off about midlife crisis today? What are you talking about? Well, what I'm talking about really is the process of evaluating your life, really looking at from a a constructive, hopefully spirit-led kind of a place. All right, why am I here? What 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 is my destiny? What what is my calling? You know, asking I've been asking myself questions like is what I am doing is it making a difference? Is it really is it even a drop in the ocean? Looking very seriously at is is what I am doing with my life day to day is it is it really what I was created to do? Now, this next question might sound like a selfish one, but I believe it's one we're supposed to ask, and that is, am I even happy doing what I'm doing? Is it satisfying? Is it it fulfilling? Is it it aligned with the inner wiring of the essence of who I really am? Am I satisfied with the results I'm seeing in my life year to year, year after year? Is it? Can I measure somehow that there's been improvement and growth and progress towards that purpose, that destiny, that calling? These are all questions that I have been pondering in one way or the other over the last several years. You know, one of the people that I read and listen to on a regular basis is Dan Miller. And uh, just a shout out to him. I'm so looking forward to being with him at his, his home and his a place he calls the sanctuary. We're going to be doing a training program with him in the couple, next couple of weeks, and I'm looking forward to that. But Dan, a number of years ago, wrote a best-selling book called 48 Days to the Work You Love, and about a year ago released a sequel to that called Wisdom Meets Passion. And I recommend both of those books highly to you because these are the kinds of questions that we look at. Man, am I just biding time? Am I just doing the same old thing every year? year in, year out, am I expecting there to be some miraculous different result in my life just because I'm I'm getting up every day and going to work? Or am I being intentional about what I do with my life? Well, for the last two years, God's really been working on me, and it's been a journey of discovery. It's been a journey of really a transformation, my relationship with him, And it's been a a journey that has led me to a different place in trusting him, trusting his leadership. He's been listening. He's been teaching me to really listen, teaching me how to rely on his wisdom and his understanding, teaching me how to seek and to rely on his leadership. In the process of this transformation in my own life, I've realized that so many things that I am doing so many of the things that I have believed, so many of the things uh, or the positions that I have defended and been so adamant about for so many years, some of those things have become antiquated. They, they've really become out of date. They're, this is going to sound harsh, but they're not even useful anymore. They're, they're sort of stale. There's no freshness to them. You know, old experiences, and thank God for all of the experiences that we've had in our lifetime. But old information, old ways of doing things, old paradigms, old thinking, old formulas, old stories, dare I say old theology, (laughs) old uh, mindsets. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I tell you, I'm... If I look back over my life, and I've, I've talked about it on this program, I, I cannot tell you how thankful I am for my past. Everything, all of it, even the, the difficult seasons, even the darkest seasons. Now that I'm standing where I am today, I can tell you with an honest heart that I'm so grateful for those seasons. However, I cannot allow my past to become my present or my future. I'm grateful for it but I cannot get stuck there. I I cannot rely on my yesterdays if I'm going to possess my tomorrows. I, I cannot live in the past if my desire is to create a future. You, you can't be two places at once. You can't be talking about what can be 
and be stuck in what was. Not too long ago, I might have mentioned this on the program before, I'm not real sure, but I, I had a the opportunity to hear a sermon by someone that I have great respect for, Pastor Mike Hayes. He pastors Covenant Church in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And it was a simple message, very short message, but one that had such profound impact on me and on so many people. And it was very simply called Old Songs, Sad Songs, No Songs, New Songs. And in this message, he he talked about how we we tend to get so familiar and so comfortable and in such a rut doing what we've always done, but we don't realize that what was once a fresh song, a brand new song, an exciting song to sing, and I'm using a metaphor here, of course, but what was once exciting and fresh and new and life-giving has become a really old song. And if we continue to sing old songs long enough, the old songs actually become sad songs. And all of a sudden now we're, we're no longer looking to the future, but we're stuck on the past. And the longer we get, stay stuck on the past, the sadder and the more, uh, the more down we get and, and the less life there is in our activities and in our world. He went on to say that if you stay stuck in the sad song place long enough, you're going to wind up with no song. And he was talking about how so many people, so many people are just literally, they're breathing. They can fog up a mirror. They have a pulse, but there's no life in them. There's no song. There's no vibrancy, no excitement about the future and about what God has for them. But he didn't stop there. He said he really believed, and I believe this. It it struck a chord with me. He said, I believe that we're coming into a season right now where God is bringing us into, if we're willing to embrace it, he's bringing us into a new song. It's not going to sound like anything we've had before, not going to look like anything we've done before, but it's, it's something fresh, something new, something vibrant and full of life. When I heard that message, it kind of messed me up, to be honest with you, because it really it really spoke to where I was. For a couple of years now, God's been just working on me. Matter of fact, I'll just go back and tell you that the beginning of 2012, I had an experience where I went away for about a five-and-a-half-day retreat, and it was a, a wonderfully... Uh, produced event, I suppose, but really it was just an environment that was created so that I could really, you know, just clear the the mud and really listen to what God had to say about my future. And in January of 2012, one, excuse me, two years ago now, I was thrust into this amazing process and this transition that is now culminating since 2012, it's it's almost like God has been whittling away at everything that has been standing between me and the realization of what he really wants to have happen in my life, this new beginning. It's been a process. It's been a, a journey. But, man, I'm so excited today I can't even hardly stand it. You say, well, man, what does this have to do with a new year? Well, It's not so much about the new year. It just so happens that all of this is kind of culminating at this time. But let me just say this. Every new year, people tend to make resolutions. Everybody starts setting goals. Everybody starts talking about what they would like to accomplish in 2014 or whatever year it might be. But what I have observed is that so few ever seem to connect the why to the what. They can tell you what they'd like to do. But there's not a heart level connection to the why. And because of this, a lot of the what's never get done. And the reason for that is if you don't have a strong enough why, if your if your heart is not connected to something, if it's not deeply embedded in your spirit, man, the why as to why, why am I Why is that important to me? Why am I going after that? 
then you won't make the necessary changes internally or externally that truly cause you to move toward the what. In other words, if the why is not strong enough, then you will not do what it takes to change yourself inside or out so that you can see the realization of that goal, that dream, that destiny moment. Somebody once said that until the pain of remaining the same is greater than the pain of the change, people won't change. And I find that to be so true. But why is that? Why does it seem that most of us get to the end of another year, such as we just did at 2013, and we look back and nothing much has changed? Year after year, we're in the same place in our business, our career. Nothing much has changed financially. Our relationships have not changed. There's no fresh life flowing in or out of those. For some, it's their health. You know, everybody starts out the new year wanting to lose weight. Problem is, when you lose weight, everybody seems to find it before the end of the next year. Well, it's my contention that while many talk about moving forward, most people are unwittingly stuck in the past. That's right. Because we don't know how to move forward. We don't know we don't know how to turn the page. And by that I mean, you know, if you read a good book, and this is true in most published books, when you get to the end of one chapter in the book, usually between the last word of that chapter and the first word of the new chapter, almost always there's a blank page. And it's that blank page that represents the in-between. It's it's What's going to happen in between what just happened and what should happen? What's going to happen between the history and the creation of a new season? And most people get to that blank page in their life, and they become fearful. They, they don't know what to expect. They're not sure what's just around the corner. They don't know what step to take. And because they don't know what is on the next page, they tend, we all tend, it's human nature, to go back to where we're comfortable and begin reliving the same thing we just did a moment ago. I love transportation. I especially love flying. You all know that. I think I've mentioned that on a number of occasions. I'm a pilot. I'm not a huge automobile buff, but I like driving nice vehicles. It's always intriguing to me how automobile manufacturers every so often, maybe every three, four, five, maybe sometimes 10 years, they completely redesign a certain model of a vehicle. They they just take what has been, and maybe it's been a very successful design for a season, but they they go back to the drawing board. As a matter of fact, in the industry, they call this clean sheet design where they take a, a, a just a brand new slate and from scratch, from the ground up, they design a new look, a new feel, a new bumper, a new type of headlight, the back part of the car looking differently, a new shape of a windshield or new features on the inside. It's a clean sheet design. It's a, as Michael Gerber, great author, great speaker once said, it's a blank sheet of paper and a beginner's mind. It's what I call a new beginning. So as we come into 2014, I want to ask you a few questions here. What do you like to know how to experience your very own new beginning? You say, Brian, I don't even know if that's possible. Is that even realistic? Well, realistic is whatever you make it to be. Because someone else's reality is not necessarily yours unless you choose for it to be. And, and yes, I'm aware that if you express what you want your new reality to be to some people, very quickly they will move you right back into where they think you should be. But wouldn't you love to know how to experience in your own life, in your own family, with your children, with your career, your finances, the ideas that have been swimming around in your head for years? Wouldn't you like to just have a fresh start, not a do-over, you don't want to do it all over again, the same stuff you just did. You want a fresh start. There's a difference. Well, how about this? Would you like to put 
the past behind you once and for all. There are some of you listening to this podcast today, and you have struggled for year after year because you have not found closure. You've not been able to resolve and reconcile events, traumatic situations, failures, broken relationships, broken trust, other hurts, other pain. You've not been able to bring that stuff and just close that chapter out. Wouldn't you love to be able to put the past behind you and leave it there? As Paul talked about, forgetting what lies behind me. I'm done with that. Thank God for the experience, but that's an old chapter. I know I would. Would you like to experience the freshness and the life that comes in a new season? You know, when we talk about seasons, we we have to think about the four seasons that we experience, you know, in the natural world here. You've got summer, which is typically hot. You have fall or autumn. You have winter. And then you have spring. And in geographic regions where four seasons are are more pronounced and more specific, where there's tr- truly four seasons, every one of those seasons have a, has a, a purpose. But the one I want to point out to you or, or really highlight for you for a moment is the transition between what is winter and what is spring. Even go back to, to autumn because in in autumn, what was green and what, what did have life, all of a sudden that foliage, that life begins to drop off of the trees and, and the trees look bare. It's kind of like what I was saying a while ago about feeling as though God's been whittling away at all this stuff. It's like everything that is of a previous season, it's like it's been falling off of me, just dropping off of me. And it feels, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit like death. I have to tell you, it feels a little bit like death. And then you get wintertime. It's barrenness. It's cold. And on the surface, it, everything looks dead. But below the surface, there is there is this thing happening, this metamorphosis. It, there is the generation of life taking place out of sight. You can't see it, but it's there. As the snow begins to melt, the temperatures to begin to rise and the season begins to just change a little bit. That first little bud comes out on a tree, a little green leaf, a new little limb, or from the grass or from the field, something breaks through the dirt and new life begins to emerge. It's seasons, and that's where some of you are right now. I'm convinced of it. It's where I am, and I'm telling you, we're coming into something so powerful, so wonderful This new season we're coming into right now is not going to be like anything you've seen ever before. The scope, the breadth, the height, the volume of what God is making available to us right now, it's just awesome. You see, I believe every person, every person can experience and realize the blessings and the benefits of a new beginning or a new season. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, let me just share a few ideas with you as we begin talking about this through the month of January. In 2014, in this new year that we're now embarking on, I want you to to consider the following steps because I believe these seven steps will lead you to realizing the blessings and the benefits of a new beginning. Number one, Embrace the possibilities. What does that mean? I'm going to make it real simple for you. What has God Almighty said is possible concerning your life? What has he already predetermined about the outcomes, about your finances, about your relationships, about your marriage, about your business, about your career? What you see, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, he has plans for us. So it's great to know he has plans. My question is, number one, have you embraced the possibilities? Because if he said it, if he wrote it, if he thought it about you, it's more than possible. 
Number two, you have to close out the old accounts. What do you mean? Do I got to go shut down my bank account? No, 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 no. But there are things that we leave unresolved, things that we leave undealt with, unforgiveness, hurt, disappointment, pain, trauma. We, we leave those things open. Maybe we fell flat on our face and failed miserably in 2013. Okay, I'm telling you today to close that account, close the page, close the chapter. That deal is done. You cannot go back and change that. You cannot go back and fix it. Now, if you need to release somebody or forgive them and let that go, do that. But whatever it takes for you to close out the old accounts, I'm encouraging you to do that. Number three, forget the past. Wasn't that the same as closing out old accounts? Not necessarily. Because you can allegedly close out an account, but keep dwelling in your mind on the past. No. Forget the past. Forget means forget. You say, well, don't I need to, to utilize my past experiences to to know how to handle certain things? Yeah, we, we draw on our past experiences. I'm not talking about that. You can't really forget, like put it out of your consciousness, something that happened to you, but you can forget the hold that that thing has on you. You can leave it behind you. Forgetting those things that are behind me, I'm looking forward to what's ahead. Forget the past. Number four, revisit your dreams. What do you mean revisit? I'm talking to someone today who has absolutely shelved. Some of you put your dreams in a closet. Some of you had them in deep storage. Some of you have them in a safe deposit box that you haven't looked into for years. Dreams that were in your heart, even as a child, dreams that were in your heart as a young adult, things that God put in your heart that you could do, that you could accomplish, that you could make significant contributions, make a difference in the world, dreams, ideas. But because of life and because of not knowing how to put the past behind you, you just you just kind of put those things away in compartments and just left them there. I'm telling you, dust them off. Revisit them. Spend time with them. Look at the dreams and the desires that are there in your heart because it's those dreams that God is longing to cause now to come forward and become realities in your life. Number five, change your thinking. Change your thinking. You, uh, Albert Einstein, you've heard me say it many times, said this, we cannot solve today's problems with the same level of thinking we were on when we created the problem. You, you cannot move into a new dimension of life, a new season, and expect that your paradigm and your mindsets that may have served you well 15 years ago, they're not going to serve you well in the season. You have to change your thinking. If you are poverty-minded and you struggle with money, you have to become success-minded. You have to become prosperity-minded. You have to reprogram your mind to think the blessing of God. It maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Change your thinking. Align yourself, number six, by the way, number six. Align yourself with like-minded, positive people. This one's going to hurt. In 2014, I've made a conscious decision. I'm going to spend way less time with people who are negative. I'm going to spend almost zero time with people who are sucking life from me. I'm going to spend very little time with people who do not have similar dreams and hopes. It, they may not be the same genre or niche mine's in, but I want to be around people who are looking forward. I want to be around people who are considering the possibilities and looking into their future and saying, I'm going to have what God says I can have. I want to be around people who will build me up and not discourage me or bring me down. So align yourself with like-minded, positive people. Number seven, as you begin to have revelations and understanding around these previous six steps, I want you to develop, to write, and to begin to execute the vision that is in your heart for your new year. Develop a vision, write the vision, and then take that vision and run with it. 
So embrace the possibilities, number one. Number two, close out old accounts. Number three, forget the past. Number four, revisit your dreams. Number five, change your thinking. Number six, align yourself with like-minded, positive people. And number seven, develop, write, and execute the vision that's in your heart and run with it. Ladies and gentlemen, you can choose, you really can choose to embrace this new beginning, this new season. It is right there in front of you. It is something you can have. You can choose to make this moment a moment of breakthrough. 2014 can be your coming out year, and it should be. And I am challenging you with everything in my fiber right now to say that this, make this your year. You see, I believe God's doing something new. And I believe he's doing it in you. I want to encourage you to do something right now. I want you to go to brianholmes.com forward slash 023. That's the show notes for this episode. And I want you to go down to the comments section of that post. And I want you to share with me there, number one, your thoughts on this podcast. But most importantly, I want you to put there a statement. In 2014, it is my commitment to, and fill in the blank. It might be a goal you list there. It might be a dream that you articulate. It might be something, just a commitment to yourself to say, I commit to reevaluate the relationships in my life and draw around me people that will encourage me and help me in my future. Just something. But in 2014, it is my commitment to, and fill in the blank, put something out there, take a step, engage us in conversation, but more importantly, I want to encourage you to do what it is that God has called you to do. Well, there's a lot of interesting and wonderful things coming up here that I want to tell you about. First of all, during the month of January, in direct alignment with what we're talking about here on the podcast, but also some things we have coming up, I'll tell you about in just a moment. On my Monday Mastery video series, if you're not familiar with Monday Mastery, every single Monday we put out a brand new short three to five minute video that's a teaching nugget, an encouragement, a challenge, a principle, some tool that we're sharing, something that will help you to live your life strategically and to to really become a master of life, a master in leadership, a master in purpose. And I want to to provide that to you regularly. But this month on the Monday Mastery segments, we're going to be talking about new beginnings and keeping with the theme for the month, new beginnings. And I want you to be a part of that. I I have, coming into the new year now, a couple of more openings for coaching clients in the new year. If, If you are looking at 2014 and you are considering what can I do to really shift things, to really move things in the right direction, I want you to consider getting a coach. It may not be me, and that's okay, but I want you to really understand the value of having someone come alongside of you that can help you to identify where you're not moving forward, where you are being held back, what maybe limited beliefs are there uh, to help you formulate your goals, to help hold you accountable to those goals, to help you troubleshoot any areas you're having challenges with. There's such value in having a personal life coach or executive coach who is working with you. To find out more about that, go to brianholmes.com forward slash coaching, and you will see there some information about uh, executive coaching and life coaching. We'd love to serve you, or just on that page, you can really learn the benefits of what a coach can do for you. Also, I want to tell you that if you'd like to have us speak at your conference, your leadership event, any type of a training seminar, any area that we could serve you or your organization, and we'd love to have that opportunity to do that. For more information about my speaking, you can go to brianholmes.com forward slash speaking. I want to share with you right now an announcement that I think is just so important, and I am so pumped. I've been telling you about this for a couple of weeks now. It is our New Beginnings Seminar that's coming up on January 25th. It's coming up very quickly, uh, but we still have seats available for that, and I would love so much to have you there 
Take a listen to this. Well, 2013 is coming to an end. But more importantly, this season of your life is coming to an end. Whatever that means to you, understand this. Life is about seasons. And I want to tell you about a very exciting opportunity that we have coming up on January the 25th, 2014. I'm going to be hosting right here in Dallas-Fort Worth a New Beginnings Workshop. In that training, I'm going to be talking about putting the past behind you once and for all. Would you like to do that? Would you like to take all those things that have limited you and held you back, the emotions, the hurts, the experiences, the failures, the mindsets, and bury those once and for all and leave them behind you? Would you like to awaken the dream and the heart and the passion for your future and for your purpose and your destiny? Would you like to build a strategic plan and really have a, a vision that you can write down, make it plain, so that you can run in 2014 with great intensity and great success. This seminar is going to provide those kinds of things for you. I want to invite you to be a part of this landmark event, January 25th, 2014, right here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Go to brianholmes.com forward slash new beginnings for all the details and for information about registration. Don't miss this opportunity. Wherever you are in your life right now, don't miss this opportunity to experience a new beginning. So once again, that's coming up on January 25th. Saturday the 25th will begin uh, in the morning. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day of working together. This is not going to be a lot of lectures. It's going to be experiential. It's going to be very process-oriented. We're going to be walking you through some specific steps that from start to finish is going to bring you to the most remarkable place. As a matter of fact, the last session of the day, we're going to be doing a powerful activation process that I believe will launch you into this new beginning, and I'd love for you to be a part of it. Let me tell you this right now. There is a special taking place until tonight. Now, if you're hearing this on uh, January the 4th, which is when it's being released uh, online, then you will, I'm sorry, January the 3rd, rather, uh, until 11.59 p.m. on Saturday night the 4th. That's 24 hours more from right now when you're hearing this. There is a ridiculous special on this. I'm not going to give you all the details, but you get a whole lot more than just admission to the seminar, but that's a part of it. But it is a $77 bundle that includes a, a copy, a signed copy of my book, over 30 hours of audio training that I'm making available to you, and then also admission to the seminar for a ridiculous price of $77. That's only good through January the 4th, 11.59 p.m. At 12 a.m. on the 5th, then that special and bundle does go away because we've had it up since before Christmas. And then the early bird, the regular early bird pricing will ensue for the seminar. But in any event, go to brianholmes.com forward slash new beginnings. And we really, really want you to be a part of this very special landmark event. Well, I want to just ask you one other favor. If you find what we're doing here at Strategic Living Podcast to be of great value to you, I want to ask you to share this with your friends. Tell someone this year about this. Hey, this year you need to be hearing uh, the the teaching, the training, the encouragement that's taking place at brianholmes.com. Subscribe to our email updates. And, of course, if you would be so kind to rate us in iTunes, that also helps us to get the word out about this podcast. I'm so grateful to have you along with us as we enter into a new season, a new year, a new beginning. And I believe with all of my heart, this is going to be one of your best years ever. I thought we'd go out today with a little, just a little clip of this great song. It's a new season. I trust something we've shared with you today has challenged you. I trust that you feel a sense of hope, a sense of excitement about the future. I feel, Lord, that this is going to be a great time for you to really express yourself in a new and a very challenging, a very powerful way. Until next time, remember this. You're made in His image. You are designed for a purpose, and you are destined for greatness. Come on, everybody. 
Go with me into this great new season, this great new beginning. Take care, and we'll see you back here next week. Children walk in victory It's so available to you right now Just take